Howdy freeze dryers, welcome back to the Live Life Simple Kitchen. Our community is amazing in the freeze drying world because we keep getting more and more members, more and more creative minds, and uh, just new recipes and new ideas for cooking freeze dried food and rehydrating freeze dried food just keep coming up. And things that I thought would never freeze dry three or four years ago now seem possible. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna do a recipe that I didn't think would uh, would actually freeze dry and uh, especially rehydrate. We're gonna do enchiladas today. And I also have an amazing enchilada sauce, probably the best you've ever had, best I've ever had. We're gonna do all that today, coming up. <laughs> the secret behind making a generic or boring recipe like enchiladas is always going to be the spices you add and the sauce that you add. And today's sauce is my wife's and she doesn't get credit often enough. She's a very good cook and way better than I am. I just kind of relay the recipes to you guys and turn them into freeze drying. Uh, so we're gonna start on this sauce. You're just gonna need a mixing bowl. And our first ingredient is gonna be nine tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Nine tablespoons is also about half a cup plus one tablespoon of flour. This is gonna be for a medium freeze dryer today and I'm gonna make the recipe so it fits one medium tray. And then next we need six tablespoons of chili powder. And since we were doing freeze drying recipes that are kind of in bulk all the time, a handy thing to know is that four tablespoons equals about a quarter of a cup of spices. So when you're doing big recipes like this, convert those four tablespoons into cups instead of tablespoons. Next we need four and a half teaspoons of cumin and then two and a quarter teaspoons of garlic powder, followed by three teaspoons of oregano, one and a half teaspoons of salt, a heaping teaspoon of cinnamon. We're gonna take about half a cup of broth and get that heated up in a saucepan. And we wanna mix all of these spices together really well. And we'll know when that saucepan is ready because if you take a little bit of flour and drop it on there, you kinda want it to sizzle. All right, then we're ready to add our flour mixture. We're gonna whisk this all together. And really what you're trying to do is just kinda bring out the, the fragrance of all these spices. Just about a minute on the stove and you should be good to go. Then we're gonna add some tomato paste. Then we're gonna add six tablespoons of tomato paste. So this is really going to thicken up until we get our next ingredient in. And that's gonna be our six cups of vegetable broth. We're gonna slowly add that in while we're mixing the whole time. And while we're adding that in, we're gonna to wanna to take our heat up because we're gonna bring this up to a simmer. And you're gonna want this to simmer for about five minutes. You wanna be whisking this the entire time. You're really looking to thicken this up. Once this hits, um, once this has simmered for five minutes, we're gonna remove it from heat and we're gonna set it aside and then we're gonna add some apple cider vinegar to it. And I went ahead and when I removed my heat, I put it into a mixing bowl. My, my uh, saucepan was just about full. We're gonna start off adding about six teaspoons of apple cider vinegar. And you can kind of go from there up to like nine or 10 if you want. I'm using unfiltered and unpasteurized. I think that's, that's the best stuff there is. And really what this is doing is adding just a mountain of flavor. This completely changes what this tastes like and really I think that's the secret ingredient. And if you're not already taking your daily dose of apple cider vinegar that's unpasteurized with the mother, you're missing out, do some research. And we're ready to go on to our first tray. I'm gonna use, uh, this is gonna go on to silicone. I think that silicone will probably work the best for this. And then I'm gonna throw some dividers in as well. Just to give us some portions, we'll see how it freeze dries, if it will stay in cubes or not. I'm gonna to top it off with a lid, I'm gonna throw it in the freezer, and then we're gonna work on our enchiladas. We want three to four pounds of sweet potatoes, you want them cubed, and you want them to be cubed relatively small so your, uh, your chances of rehydration being uh, at its best. The bottom of this Instant Pot, you're gonna want this silicone type uh, rack or a similar type rack if you have one. We don't want those to burn to the bottom. You want one cup of water at the bottom of it. So we're gonna go into the Instant Pot with these. It seems like the magic time is about five to six minutes. And while we're waiting for that, we want to dice up two onions. We're gonna add some vegetable oil to a frying pan. And we're gonna add our onions to that and 20 cloves of garlic or 10 teaspoons if you have this, this kind of garlic. 
And we're gonna saute this for about seven to 10 minutes until everything's translucent. Then we're gonna add two cans of drained black beans. And if you don't have a, a pot or a pan that's big enough to do all of this in, you can cut this recipe in half. I just figured it would be it would be convenient if you could do two pans or two trays in the medium at a time. So our sweet potatoes should be done. One you can, way you can work around that is to actually just do this all back into the Instant Pot. And now we're gonna hit it with that big enchilada taste. We're gonna do six teaspoons of cumin, four teaspoons of chili powder, a teaspoon of salt. We need the juice of two limes. And then we're gonna take four avocados and we're gonna dice those up and throw those in the mix. And what this is gonna do is give us a freeze dryer friendly way to make these real creamy. So if you're gonna add, um, if you want cheese as well, this is a good time to add it and it will, it's still hot and it's gonna melt that cheese. We're gonna take the avocado and you just kinda smash it in there. You don't wanna completely ruin your, your chunks of sweet potatoes, but we want everything to get mixed up and ideally you want those avocados to kinda blend in with everything and add some creaminess. And that fit two medium pans just perfect. I'm gonna do the dividers in the 10 portion. This should make about 10 enchiladas. This would be if you are just going to re, or if you're just gonna freeze dry kind of the meat or the, uh, the substance that goes in the enchiladas. But what if we wanted to do the whole enchilada? Because for my last tray, I want to do a whole enchilada and I wanna rehydrate a whole enchilada just to see if we can make it work. I'm gonna try it a couple different ways. We'll try it with the, uh, the fresh stuff and then we'll add it to a tortilla like this. And then I wanna rehydrate a tortilla just by itself. That's why I have two of those. But then I want to roll an enchilada, not coat it with sauce, um, and then try and rehydrate it with the sauce and maybe a little bit of water. So we'll put these directly onto the tray. These are probably gonna hold up. The rest of the freeze drying cycle would be my guess just because it's, it's pretty thick, but We'll see what it takes. I'm gonna throw these in the deep freeze. We'll get them good and frozen. We'll throw them in the freeze dryer tomorrow. And we'll see you then. All right, well these are good and frozen now. Take a minute to subscribe to Retired at 40 Live Life Simple. We do freeze drying on this channel. We also do things that are related to freeze drying, food storage, a little homesteading, some gardening. And while you're there, make sure you take a minute to hit that bell to get notifications. That'll let you know when a future video comes out. For us, that's every Sunday at 8 a.m. And make sure that if you found the videos helpful, give us a thumbs up, let us know, let YouTube know. Give us a thumbs up. And if you're interested in freeze drying, make sure you try one of our social media groups. We have about 55,000 members on there right now as of this recording. And if you can't find the answer to your question, well, I don't know that there is an answer to your question at this point. There's so many people on there and there's so many old threads that you can search. You can use this magnifying glass just like this. You can search old threads. You can search all kinds of different topics, keywords, members, anything you can think of. And if you're thinking about pulling the trigger on a freeze dryer or you just wanna know some information and specs, please consider using our affiliate link. That can be found down below in the description. And if you purchase through that affiliate link through uh, Harvest Right, that actually sends us a small commission. We take that commission, we put it back into the freeze drying community. We do giveaways in our uh, social media groups. And we also use that to develop new products for freeze drying at freezedryingsupplies.com. We're trying to streamline the whole process, make the whole thing as easy as possible. So I'm gonna press go on our freeze dried enchiladas and we'll see you in a little bit when these are all done. All right, well this freeze drying process was a bit of a pain. Uh, I kept tripping an arc fault breaker. So I had like seven power outages. But we're gonna get that taken care of with an electrician today. But uh, it looks like we were, this says 28 hours and 43 minutes. I don't know how accurate that is. Uh, there was a lot of time added on. There was a lot of time of this just sitting idle because there, it had no power. So I don't really know what the real cycle time is. I would guess probably 25 to 30 hours. But let's take a peek and see what this looks like. Everything looks actually really, really good. And the whole enchiladas, the whole enchilada was really what I was the most concerned about. I put the infrared thermometer on it and it's reading over 100 all the way through. So that's a good thing. And our enchilada sauce actually stayed in nice cubes with our dividers. So that'll be really handy for rehydration. Now I'm gonna bag this up. We're gonna try and uh, rehydrate 
our tortilla shells uh, whole by just putting them in the fridge overnight. I also want to try and rehydrate this enchilada as a whole. We'll rehydrate that with uh, some of our enchilada sauce and then we'll also rehydrate some enchilada sauce, mix it with our enchiladas and make fresh enchiladas. And these stayed in a nice cube form so this will actually help quite a bit uh, for picking your serving sizes. So I'm gonna get everything bagged up and I will meet you at the rehydration station. All right, so let's talk about rehydrating a whole enchilada and just a shell. First problem I see is that keeping these in one whole piece, one whole tortilla shell is gonna be pretty difficult. But if you can manage it, the easiest way to do this is just a Ziploc bag, throw them in there with a wet, wet paper towel sheet just like that. I'm gonna put mine uh, one on each side, I think. And then we're just gonna let them sit. And I like to put mine in the fridge. The fridge actually probably helps with just adding a little bit more moisture also. But really the key to this is not making them soggy. So you want the paper towel to be wet but not just drenched with uh, water dripping off of it. The enchilada, the whole enchilada is gonna have the same problem. I can show you here is that you can see it's kind of starting to crack in spots and I have a feeling that when we rehydrate this, that's all just gonna kind of fall apart. But let's give that a try. We're gonna do the same method. We're just gonna take a Ziploc bag with a wet paper towel. I'm gonna set it on there. We're just gonna go into the fridge with this. Now let's rehydrate some of the enchilada filling uh, as well as the enchilada sauce and just make a homemade enchilada from scratch. Well, it's been close to 24 hours. We'll check on our tortilla shells and our enchilada. And our tortilla shell, it did start to soften up just a little bit. You know, I think if this was in for another probably 24 hours, I think it would probably actually come back. I think the chances of these tortilla shells uh, staying intact all the way through food storage, however, however long that is, I think that's a pretty slim chance of that happening. Uh, but if you could, I, I think they would, they would eventually come back. 24 hours didn't do it for them, but they are softening up quite a bit. So I think another 24 hours, they'd be, they'd be good to go. Our enchilada, the whole enchilada is still just about the same. It, it softened up just a little bit. But I do want to try something with this enchilada. I want to rehydrate some of this enchilada sauce and then I want to throw this in the Avid Armor uh, with the marinade setting and see if we can get it to open up those pores and actually take back in some of that enchilada sauce. And then if it seems to be working, we can try and add some water too and see if we can bring back the whole thing uh, as one piece. We'll just add a little slowly. Usually this kind of stuff, it almost melts because it's so dry that it just wants to take in that moisture. I'm gonna give that a few minutes just to take in some more water and then I'm gonna actually do our enchilada filling. I'm just going with the same technique. We're just gonna add water slowly. Let it sit, maybe add a little more if we need to. And our enchilada sauce did perfect. Just what we wanna do, I'm gonna add this to our whole enchilada. Just gonna drizzle it over the top here. I don't have high hopes of this working, but if nothing else, it might spawn some ideas of how to rehydrate some other stuff that's not so difficult. We're gonna pop this in the Avid Armor. And then I also sat it on top of a wet paper towel. Really, I just wanna see what this does. You can really see it bubbling now. It's starting to spread out over the enchilada, which is kinda of cool, which is probably what you really want it to do. I don't think it changed much. No surprise there really, but I do think this would work well for certain types of foods. All right, well, I think this is probably still really dry, but I know there's a lot of uh, creative minds out there and I'd love to hear if anyone has any ideas. I know people have been doing a lot of cool things with uh, pressure cookers and steamers and things like that. It's just difficult to bring something like this back because it is so dry. Uh, it's hard to bring it back without making it soggy. But I will say that our enchilada sauce did awesome. Our filling also did awesome. So what I'm gonna do is just make a fresh enchilada, then we're gonna bake it. So our two squares should be enough for uh, two enchiladas. So we're just gonna roll these. We're gonna put the seam down in our baking dish. But before we do that, I forgot we need to take just a little bit of enchilada sauce 
put it on the bottom here. Just that helps with the, so the enchiladas don't stick to the bottom of the pan. Then we're gonna put them in here. We're gonna take the rest of our enchilada sauce and we're just gonna cover the tops of these. This would also be the time to top with some cheese if you're gonna do some cheese. And we all know that freeze dried cheese does relatively well. So that's one of those things that you could just stockpile uh, aside and just use it as you need it. We're gonna go to 350 on the oven and then we're gonna bake those for 25 to 35 minutes. And in go the enchiladas. All right, let's see how we did. I can already tell that I probably should have added a little more water to our sauce before I put it on. But other than that, these look pretty darn tasty. So you want your edges to be crispy and you can see that the sauce is a little thicker than it should have been. You kind of want it to just pour over the top, but other than that, I think these look great. So they look good, they smell good, but do they taste good? I think we've got another freeze dryer winner. Other than uh, not being able to really freeze the tortilla shells, man, these are really good. I love that sauce. They taste like they were just made. They have the right texture. You would never know they were freeze dried. That's a home run. Another one to add to the freeze drying cookbook coming out soon. In the meantime, this is Retired at 40. Remember to live life simple. Catch you next week.